Look at this guys, this is unbelievable. I was just walking here and look at this. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Oh man. Oh, it's so big. That's so cool. It's just laying here, unbelievable. individual plank. Each plank is 15 inches wide and 10 feet long. The first row was placed accurately with reference to the established line. Half pieces made by burning one of the steel planks in two were used so that the second and subsequent rows would break joints. The keys on the edges of the plank lock the rows firmly together and a spring clip is provided for insertion in the keyways prevent the strip from becoming unlocked while the runway is in use. A lot of foxholes in this area, but it's very hard to find good stuff because I've been here so many times already. But right now, I just had a signal on this, an exploded fuse. Maybe there are still markings in there, it's aluminum. That's an interesting find. Right, so I just cleaned it a little with uh, some seal wool and I found some numbers right there and right there. Some kind of marking right there on the right side. Uh, first, I thought it was a fuse, but I actually think it's from a plane, a crashed plane. Uh, like I explained before in some videos, uh, some planes crashed here in this area and um, I'm finding a lot of plane parts in this area, so yeah, because of the number right there, it's a pretty long number, I think it's from the plane. So uh, that's a very cool find. And the next find is gonna be a US World War II M1 carbine life round. There you can see the primer. I think it's PC 1943, let me clean it real quick for you. Yep, it's PC 1943. Can you see it on the bottom right there, 43? Finds in this area are most of the times in bad condition because of the ground. But uh, yep, that's definitely second World war M1 carbine live round. Pretty hard to see on the camera, but this is a foxhole. And uh, right next to it just found a bullet. It's in pretty bad condition, completely uh, rusted as you can see. Look at this. Wow, that's a very, very old bell. Unbelievable. Whoa. Might be made from bronze, I'm not sure. Oh, wow, it's shiny. Can you see that? Whoa. This is so, whoa, look at the color. And look at the way it's made. This is definitely old. Wow, this is so cool. Looks like it's in very good condition. I'm not sure what kind of material this is. <laughs> I always love to find these. There's a foxhole right over there. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, probably not. And right here we got tracks from the Second World War. And right over here, I just had a great signal. And this is definitely a pocket knife. Um, looks like it's in pretty bad condition, but I can still see the handle. That's very cool. Let me clean it very carefully. You can see there was a shield right there. Too bad the knife itself is in very bad condition. Of course, made from iron, so completely rotted away, but uh, yeah, that's a very, very cool find. Small signal right next to a foxhole once again. There you can see it. And uh, this time it's a US World War II button. No markings, but a very, very nice find. Hopefully it's not gonna fall apart because the ground here is pretty bad, but uh, so far it looks pretty good. Very nice, let's carry on. Okay, so a Lancaster uh, crashed in that area, but right over there, a V1 rocket uh, came down. So I just had a signal right there and look what I've just found. I recognize this as the cooling system from a V1 rocket. So this is a very rare find. Um, I found a lot of pieces in this area from a V1 rocket. So yeah, that's very, very interesting. So you definitely don't find these every day. But uh, yeah, this is from a V1 rocket, a very rare piece. That's another amazing find. See that? Box holes I'm talking about. Right here and right there. It's another one. And right there as well. They're all over the place. All right, look at that. That's a shell casing. And this is definitely a Dutch shell casing. 
from the Hembrug carbine. Another signal right there and unbelievable, right underneath the leaves. I just found another Dutch World War II shell casing. Wow, that's very nice. Hi everyone, today we are in a very interesting location. I'm together with Mark. Uh, you know him from the trench videos, of course. Um, this is a very, like I said, a very interesting location. Uh, there were a lot of German soldiers right here. Yeah, definitely. Um, during the liberation. And the Americans came from that side. They sort of um, surrounded them, right? Yeah. Um, they surprised uh, the Germans. They were warned by children that were living over there from the, um, the window. On the attic. On the attic, yeah. The Americans started shooting in this direction. Four Germans were killed on this road. On this road. Yeah. On this road right here where we are standing right now. There is a story about it that they were hiding um, behind these trees, right? Yeah. So the Germans were hiding behind these trees and we are here today to search for evidence from that battle. That thing that happened here, it would be so awesome if we could find evidence, maybe a bullet or something like that. I mean a bullet would be very, yeah, very interesting. Be... So, I mean normally I find a lot of bullets, but if you find a bullet right over here, I hope you can hear me by the way because of the wind, but if we find a bullet right over here, we just know that it's from that story. So. Very special. Very special and so yeah, we're now gonna start um, detecting here. Hopefully we can find something. We have permission to search in the fields here as well. We're just gonna start now and I see you if I found something. All right, so these are still the original trees and uh, we just had our first signal right there. It was pretty deep. Uh, we don't know what it is. It looks old so there is a big possibility that this is from the Second World War. But yeah, it's too rusty and we just don't know what it is. But um, it's interesting. All right, so we did a recheck on the hole and it was even more in there and turned out to be an old bucket. As you can see, some this glass. is the handle, some glass. So this could be from uh, the Second World War. It's old, that's for sure. And there's strange stuff in the hole. As you can see this stuff. Still a lot more We're not sure what, yeah? Yeah. What is it? I don't know. This stuff? Uh, no, I don't know. It's, hard. it's weird stuff. We're of course not gonna keep this. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's definitely old, so that's a good sign. All right, so we've been detecting for a while. There is a lot of trash, but finally, our first real evidence of the Second World War. We just found this piece of shrapnel, probably uh, artillery. So that is very interesting. I'm pretty sure there are no numbers in this, but I find these pretty often. That's a very good find and very special because it's uh, from this location. Another interesting find. Uh, it's a lot older than the Second World War, but that's a musket ball. So it's from a war, probably, but uh, yeah, definitely not the Second World War. I hope you can hear me. Just found this. It's a pretty funny looking item. I think it's pretty old, but uh, I'm not sure what it is. Interesting. All right, just clean it a little with the uh, steel wool, as you can see. Still in pretty good condition, never marked, but that's definitely US. Okay, I just found another musket ball, but look at this. This is so extremely small. This is insane. All right, this is a pretty unexpected find. Just had a signal right there, and uh, this is what I found. But look at this, this was in the same hole. See that, that's a skull, and that's pretty strange. Uh, also this, the jaw, jaw bones. So yeah, and that was underneath it. So I first found this and then uh, this and the skull. Hmm. All right, um, so we couldn't really find anything more on the other location. So we are in a different location right now. Interesting spot. And uh, look what we just found. That's, um, yeah, it looks like the lid from a field kitchen maybe. Can you turn it around maybe? Yeah. I think that's what it is. But yeah, I'm pretty sure that's from the Second World War. Looks, uh, yeah, looks pretty old. Yeah, I think that's that's from World War II. That's a pretty big chance. All right, today we're in a different spot. I uh, found some uh, interesting stuff here before from the Second World War and older. I even found uh, a full magazine of a M1 carbine right over there. And uh, yeah, I just started detecting. Found the remains of an old wallet over there. And <laughs> look what I just found. I think it's pretty old. Used to have wooden handles, completely rotted away. By the way guys, uh, sorry for the annoying sound the detector is making, as you can hear. 
we're right next to the railroad, so yeah, there's nothing I can really do about that. So sorry, but I just had a signal right there and found this. I was thinking about maybe from a radio, maybe Second World War, and this tube because there were Germans here defending the railroad, so um, could be from the German troops sitting in the foxholes here. Look at this, guys, might be from a field kitchen. I know there was a field kitchen located right over there somewhere, so yeah, who knows. All right, there was a lot of dumped stuff over there from the 1950s, so I moved up this way. Behind this hill is where I found the M1 carbine uh, magazine and some more shell casings, including German. And right over here just had a signal, and this is what I found. This is a Dutch World War II shell casing from the Hembrug carbine, and it's in great condition too. So yeah, it might be... Yeah, it looks like it's in very good condition. It might be used by the Germans. Um, let me clean the hat stamp real quick for you, uh, so I can show you. All right, so I just cleaned the hat stamp, and look at that, 1896. <laughs> uh, yeah, the Dutch army was using very old ammo. Unbelievable, 1896. Ammo from the 1800s. Typical Hamburg carbine uh, shell casing, because the top is very small, and uh, the bottom looks a little bit like a 303. Very, very nice find. Just had a signal, it was pretty deep, and uh, huh, just an old soda can. Well, it's very old, maybe from the 1960s. All right, this is definitely World War II related. <laughs> uh, you know what this is? Yeah, of course, obviously this is a live round level ammo used by the Germans, um, especially late war. This is amazing, and I'm pretty sure it's in good condition. I'm gonna clean it a little so I can show you. Look at this. That's pretty strange for this time of the year. Okay, after some cleaning. <laughs> That's insane. After 75 years under the ground in this condition. And it wasn't even that deep. It was right over there. It's shiny. Right there on the right, it says 31. So 1931. Wow, unbelievable. That's so beautiful. Next find is gonna be this. I'm pretty sure this is a World War II ration opened up. Hopefully there's still something on it. I don't think so, but um, maybe, oh, I can see some green paint right there. Can you see that? Yeah, that's definitely green. Oh, wow. I'm gonna put it in a plastic bag and hopefully after some oxalic acid stuff, maybe there will be something visible. I don't think so, but we can always hope. Hi everyone, today we are in Belgium and we are together with Mark. This is the forest uh, where we found Benny Bob Bellamy's dog tag right behind us. You can see a foxhole right over here. It's pretty hard to see in the camera probably, but because of the sun you can see it. This is a US foxhole. I found a lot of stuff here before. There's also a crash site right over there. I found a lot of plane parts here before. So um, we're also gonna try to find that. I've been there once and then we got attacked by wild boars. So I had to run. Oh, wow. uh, <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, so it's been a while since we've been there. But we're gonna try to find some plane parts today as well. And um, I'm gonna show you Benny Bob Bellamy's foxhole because it's a very interesting place and you've yeah. never been there before. No. Yeah, so yeah, I'm gonna show, uh, show him the foxhole and um, we're gonna search in this area for relics. Hopefully we're gonna find something interesting. And um, yeah, I will see you later. Let's search. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we just started detecting right over here. This is a foxhole. I immediately got a small signal, iron signal, and we found a few things, definitely from the Second World War. Um, yeah, this handle, uh, it's from a wooden ammo box, it's how you close it, you know, the click click thing, <laughs> I'm not sure how to call it, um, but it's to close an ammo box, so that's very interesting, of course, the wood right out of the way, because it's a wooden box, and the rest is gone, and this is what's left. Some more iron stuff. I believe this is what, what's around the boxes most of the times. You know, to seal the box, could be. <clears throat> but that's an, uh, that's an interesting find. It's pretty rusty, but uh, it's from the Second World War, so that's amazing. It's a good first find. Let's see what we can find more. All right, guys, another signal right over here, and uh, where is it? Um, <laughs> I lost it. Right there. Oh, there it is. Very good camouflage. Uh, yeah, just found this U.S. World War II uh, button, maybe from a um, music bag, but it's definitely U.S. World War II. Look at that. That's amazing. Wow, that's a great find. <laughs> wow, I didn't expect that so fast. So, um, yeah, I've been here a lot of times before, but, yep, you can't find every single thing. So, we're lucky. Look, Mark, this 
is Benny Bob Bellamy's foxhole. Wow, that is it, right here. And right there, that's where I found his dog tag. So wow. this is where I found his tag. I found his ration right over there, and that's his foxhole. That's insane, huh? Yeah, it's a special moment. Yeah, yeah. it sure is. I mean, I just found this piece of shrapnel mm -hmm. right over there. So maybe he was killed here by artillery, who knows? Yeah. I found some German shell casings here as well. I believe two over there. So maybe he was shot, we don't yeah. know. Maybe he was, maybe there was a, a bombing or a, a yeah. artillery, so they, he was running towards his foxhole yeah. and got killed over here. Yeah, it could be. We just do not know. We don't know the cause of death. The only thing we know was that he was killed on December 10, 1944. That's all we know. He was 21 years old. Insane, huh? And now you see all the foxholes here and probably his friends right next to it. And there and everywhere you look are foxholes in this area. And it's so quiet. Just listen. Only cars in the distance. That's everything. If there are no cars at all, then it's so silent. The only thing you can hear are the birds and nothing. So peaceful. Pretty different back then. Oh yeah, there were so many. I, I'm, we're really talking about thousands here yeah. in this forest. Just jeeps, trucks driving around, soldiers sitting in a foxhole, talking with each other, making coffee, and now it's this. Hmm. Special, huh? Yeah, it is. Okay, so right there is Benny's foxhole right next to Mark, and um, I just found another piece of shrapnel right over here. You can see this is also a uh, foxhole, a bigger one, maybe uh, MG gunner, could be. Uh, maybe Browning, who knows, but um, look, another piece of shrapnel, and yeah, it's very rusty, but this is definitely a keeper because it's uh, from uh, this location. I got a very good signal, and I can already see a little bit, and I believe it's a plane part, I really love to find these plane parts. Wow, it's a big part. Wow, this is insane. That's cool. What are you laughing at? Oh, no, I'm just excited. <laughs> oh yeah, it is exciting. Okay, guys. Ooh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Look at this. That's a big piece. Oh man. Oh, that's so cool to find. You can see all the small holes in it from the nails. <sighs> Aluminum color still, maybe some paint left on it, maybe after the oxalic acid. Some damage right there from the crash, but look at this. This is a plane part. And right there, you can see the, um, the small trees, the thin trees over there, the uh, what they call pine trees. Mm -hmm. Behind there is the crash site. There is a big crater. And that's where the plane crashed. So, um, but this is a very, very big piece. So, that's an amazing find. Definitely is. All right, I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera, but I'm right in a foxhole right now. So is Mark. <laughs> um, just got a good signal. And I think I might have a ration. I'm pretty sure. Yep. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, there's some... <laughs> <laughs> I know what this is. This is shoe polish, and he's wearing airborne uh, <laughs> shoes. So you wanna you want some shoe polish? Really? Yeah, it, it is. This is smell. You can smell it a little bit still. Uh, smell. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. This is this is shoe polish from the Second World War. It's still a little bit green. Oh, and there's still stuff in it. Ooh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, World War II shoe polish. Awesome. Maybe. Ugh. Maybe after some oxalic acid, we might be able to save some paint. I, I don't I don't know, but look at this. This is amazing. How happy can someone be with a small rotten can, right? <laughs> Ooh, don't you smell that? I, I smoke, so... Oh, wait. No. No? That you don't way. smell it? I, have a, I can... I can. Ooh, yeah, that's shoe polish. Definitely. Wow, that's amazing. Take a look at this, guys. Can you see that? You have a close-up of it? Okay, I'm gonna turn it around. Here's a small hole right there. Because it's 75 years old, of course. But it still smells like shoe polish. Most of it is gone from the inside, but this is so cool. That's amazing. Another great signal, and it's another part of the plane. It's a small piece, 
but very interesting again. Small nails right there, typical for aircraft aluminum. Just found another small piece of the aircraft. And uh, every single piece is very interesting. The crash uh, site is somewhere over there, so I'm probably gonna find a lot of small pieces in this area. Another interesting find, just found this grommet right there. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if it's a piece of cloth or rubber, maybe right there. Looks like paper also, I'm not sure. But um, yeah, this is definitely also from the same time frame, Second World War. Uh, maybe from the plane, or maybe from one of the soldiers in the foxholes here, I don't know, not sure. But one thing for sure, it's from World War II. Right guys, just had a huge signal. So I thought it was another plane part, but I sort of was right because it's from the plane. Um, if you come closer, I can show you. Wow, you see this? This is all 303 ammo and um, they're all from the plane. The, of course, the plane came down over there and uh, it was burning um, and a lot of ammo exploded and it just went all over the place. And we can still see the belt links on it. Can you see that? That's insane, that's so cool. And there's a lot more. Here we can see, see that? It's another round, they're all live rounds. That's uh, number three, uh, this is just a root. Number four, with the belt link still on it, wow. That's insane. Another one, and another one. And let's see if there's more. Oh yeah, definitely. Look at the collar right there. See that? Look at that. That's still shiny. And let's just do a check here. Yep, got some more. Let's try to take this off. Not so rusty, just gonna keep it on. Um, let me, what's this? Is that a stone? Not sure. Let me grab my pinpointer so we can check for some more. Oh, there's another one here. Yeah, there's definitely more. So let me grab my knife. Is that another? Yeah, that's another one. And here we go. Whoa! Look at this. See that? <laughs> this is insane. I don't know what else to say. Finding stuff like this is so cool. Wow, that's so much ammo. That's, oh, there's even more. That's, that's nothing. This is more? Yep, there is more. Look at this. It's insane. Wow. See the belt links? These are, of course, ro completely rotten because uh, it's iron. Uh, another one, two, two more. Uh, nothing. Wow. <laughs> wow, you have something to see. Yeah. Wow. You don't find this often. I mean, especially this because it's from a plane. This is not just from the normal infantry that was sitting here because this is British and the soldiers here were US soldiers. Mm. And I believe the plane crashed here in 1944 or 43, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, ow. Um, I'm not sure when it, when it crashed. Unbelievable, this is laying here since the crash. I'm not sure if that's... Yeah, we have more, we have more. Look at, oh my oh. god, come here! Look at this! You see that? <laughs> Look! Oh, it's still in the belt. Yeah, it's all still in the belt. It's falling apart because it's, it's iron, but it's still all on the belt. Oh man. This is stunning. So much ammo, and there's even more. What is this? That's wood. I think it's an ammo box. No, no, it's just a root or a, it's a branch or something. It might be empty. Let me just do a recheck with my pinpointer. Yeah, I think it's empty. Well, not completely. Maybe one more. This is cool. Um, let me take this dirt out. Hopefully we're not going to find any bombs because it was a bomber. <laughs> yeah. But this is definitely not a bomb. There's something more in here. Yep, another round. Uh, wow. Okay. I, oh. Oops. Another, round. another one. 
I think that's it. Might. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh man. Look at all these life rounds. That's insane, right? Yeah, it is. Oh man. Whew. <laughs> that's a find. <laughs> So we're heading to the um, crash site. It's gonna be over there somewhere. But just look at this. It's beautiful here. The ground is still frozen. But it's a beautiful forest. It's so peaceful. The sun is shining. There's no wind. Just so silent. Let's move. Crash site. Um, we're very close to the crash site. It's gonna be right over there somewhere. Um, I just found this. Look at this. I'm not sure what it is, but it's some kind of interesting thingy. Um, hopefully there are still markings in it. Maybe uh, AM, Air Ministry. I found parts before with that stamp in it, so that's very interesting. But um, yeah, this, is, this is a very small interesting looking piece. I think it's made from brass. So it's some kind of switch. I don't know. But uh, interesting, huh? Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, now we're gonna move up that way and uh, hopefully we're gonna find the crater. Okay, so um, like I explained many times in other videos as well, um, there has been a lot of fighting here also in the First World War and there are also a lot of German trenches from World War I here and from World War II. Um, Mark just noticed this crater. This is definitely not from the plane. It's too small for that. But this is, I think, from the First World War, probably a big artillery shell or something like that. But um, yeah, I've never seen this one before. Uh, I know that the crash site is somewhere over there. It's a very big crater, and because of it, the plane is big, of course, it's going to make a big crater, so it's going to be over there. But this is definitely from the First World War, and maybe in the Second World War, they were sitting here again making coffee, who knows? But uh, yeah, it's very interesting to detect in this area. You just don't know what you're going to find. B1 parts, plane parts. Uh, American stuff from the Second World War, German stuff from the Second World War, First World War, or maybe older. You don't know. Okay, so I just found another plane part. Pretty sure about that. Um, yeah, it's everywhere because it's a huge explosion, of course. I found plane parts all around uh, this forest. So, But the closer you get, the more stuff you will find, of course. Let's see if there are any markings in it. I really hope so. Maybe it's a part of the engine or something. I don't know. But it's an interesting piece. Um, it has a small hole in there. Um, it would be nice if we could find any mark. I think I just found a marking. Let me check. Yep. Yep, there is a marking in there. Take a look. It's pretty hard to see. But that right there is a marking. And maybe there are more numbers right there, I don't know. I, I don't recognize this piece because I'm not really a uh, know everything about plane guy. But uh, <laughs> uh, if you recognize this piece, please let me know. I don't know. Hopefully there are more numbers in there. Interesting piece. It's time for a chocolate milk break. Oh, look at that. You like it? <sighs> <laughs> hey guys, an historical place. It's way too hot. <laughs> oh, it feels like lava is burning in my throat. Time to go detecting again, guys. Today we are here to search for some relics from the Second World War. And hopefully we're gonna find something. Okay, let's put our gloves on and let's move. Okay, so we just found the crater. This is where the plane came down. Let's take a look. Huge. 
See this? Unbelievable, huh? I think he came down just straight from above. Probably with his nose in the ground. Insane, huh? So right there is the crater and just found some small pieces of aluminum, of course. And I just found this. It's some kind of equipment hook. Definitely from the Second World War, I'm 100% sure about that. Uh, I'm not sure what kind of hook it is, maybe from equipment or maybe from the plane, I don't know. Or maybe from one of the pilots, I have no idea. But uh, yeah, that's definitely also from this crash site. So that's, that's very interesting. Do you recognize it? I also don't. I'm not sure what kind of hook it is, but it's... It's definitely from the plane, that's for sure. That's a very nice piece right there. It was not even under the ground, it was right there. But you can still see the black paint. That's very, very cool. So typical. Amazing. You want to keep this? You can have it. <laughs> you can have it. He's, he's, a, nice good, he's a good man. <laughs> right, guys, another piece of that. Well, it's, it's, it's from the plane. This is from an incendiary bomb. They only burn. They, uh, they cause fires. Yeah, complete cities burned down because of these bombs. They dropped a lot of them. I believe they were called cluster bombs, something like that, yeah. And uh, of course, that plane crashed here, so all the bombs just dropped here as well. Um, maybe I'm able to clean it a little bit so you can see the shape. It's iron. Oh yeah, look. Maybe after some oxalic acid, we are able to see some stampings in there because normally that would be stamped. Yeah, you see the shape? That's incendiary. There would be an aluminum piece right there. It would be, I think, maybe so long. And uh, yeah, interesting find. This is a British type of four pound incendiary bomb. To help it penetrate a roof, it has a heavy cast iron nose. It has a light metal tail containing the firing mechanism. And the body of the bomb is a magnesium alloy casing containing thermite. I just found another one from the other one right over there and this is number two also pretty rusty I found one before right here that one was still in pretty good condition it was complete and of course guys be careful with ammo don't take it with you but these are just the front pieces these are not dangerous at all but really don't play with it they ruin your life sucks in a Better condition than the other one that we found. Still a little bit rusty, of course, but it's okay. I have a good signal, and I can feel something with my fingers here. Ooh. That feels strange. Oh, it's another one. <laughs> wow, this one is very nice. I think we're even able to see the marking in this one. If we just use some steel wool, let me do a check real quick. Let's see if I can see it. There is a marking. But it's almost impossible to see right now. But there is something right there. It's hard to see. Maybe after some treatment with oxalic acid. Yeah, probably. Nice, this one is in great condition. Guess what? Just found another one. <laughs> what is it, number, number four? Yeah, number four. Again, in good condition. Oh yeah, I can see some markings in this one. B, right there on the left, and there it says 4-3. Cool, huh? Cool. I just found two more of those things, and um, right now, I thought I found another one. But this is actually more interesting. This is again from the actual plane itself. I think it's an engine part, maybe. Hopefully there are still markings in it. I think so. It's an aluminum part. Um, 
Very interesting. Wow. I just found a bomb, as you can see. This is a very big bomb. Causes fire. You can see right there. That's the back. But, of course, I found bombs before, even bigger ones. And I would never be so stupid as this because, look at this, it's empty. I'm 100% sure this one is empty, otherwise I would never pick it up like this, of course. But it's empty. I'm gonna leave the area from the plane crash right now because we're finding so much stuff. We're, st we're spending too much time here. So, I wanna walk up there, I wanna walk. <sighs> I wanna go that way right now. See if we can find some stuff over there. But I, we will definitely return here, search for more amazing stuff because everything you find here, there are so many signals here from the plane crash. This is also from the plane. Look at this, it's amazing. It's very heavy. Just dropped a bomb. Right, so we're moving up to the World War I trenches over there. But we're running out of time, so we need to be quick. But on the way, just found this World War II US push button. It's in pretty bad condition. But you can still definitely see it's a World War II push button. Okay, so I just wanted to go up that way, but I did a recheck on the hole. And there was actually another one. See that? So that's number two right there. Okay, it's, um, I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera, but we're standing in a World War I trench. They're even deeper over there. But this is a World War I trench, German trench. And the funny thing is, these are German World War I trenches. And later again in 1944, the Americans came here and they were making foxholes again. And they probably also used the First World War trenches as well, so... But yeah, you can find stuff from World War One, World War Two. you don't know. So we just found the bigger trenches, as you can see. You see it? What do you think? Oh, it's pretty big. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty big. It's still pretty big. They're huge and they're going like that and then that way. And um, I've never really detected here in this area. But again, we don't have enough time to detect here. Maybe a little bit, but not too much time anymore because it's getting dark pretty soon. As you can see, beautiful trees here. This is such a beautiful forest. Maybe we can find a shovel. <laughs> wow. There's even more over there. Some kind of old tool. Huh. I'm pretty sure. This wasn't used for digging these trenches. Okay, so we're trying to find our way back to the car, but we sort of lost our way. So we need to go through this creepy forest. Oh, I don't know where I'm going. Uh -oh. um, we're stuck. We can't get through here. Where should we go? I think this way. Oh, I'm just gonna use my long legs to, oh. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, we're gonna fall. Oh. <laughs> I fell. Ow! Oh. Oh. Ow! Oh my god. What am I doing? Ow. Um. I guess I just pushed through or something. Oh god. Lucky you. You're behind me. Oh my god, my detector is stuck! Oh. Okay, get this through, and just push! Oh. Ow! Oh. Just push! Go! Oh. Oh. oh my god. Oh, this is horrible. Oh, I don't know where I am! Ow, my feet! Oh, There are twigs in my, in my jacket. Oh my god. Let's go through! Ouch! Oh, ow! Oh, oh my god. Oh. What are we are doing for a YouTube video? Yes, we made it! Ah, uh, a new day in the forest. I just started detecting right over here, discovered this foxhole, and over there, as you can see, is another one. And between these two foxholes, I had a very small signal, an iron signal. So I just started digging and look what I found. A lot of US World War II ration cans. Isn't that amazing? That's the first find of the day. Look at this. This one is still complete. Looks like it's sealed. A lot of them 
just fell apart because, uh, yeah, they're pretty rusty, of course. This one is small. I think it's maybe a um, Nescafe, soluble coffee. And I have one as well that's still a little bit green. Yeah, this one, look at that. See that? Still a little bit green right there. So that's amazing. You can see these all, uh, the bottoms and the tops opened with a key, you know, click, click, click on the side. Um, these are very, very cool. So that's the first find of the day, World War II US rations. Hopefully we can still uh, save them. I don't want them to fall apart, but uh, looks like this one is in pretty good condition. Even looks like there is cloth or something attached to it. Hmm, interesting. Let's uh, put these in the bag and continue. Right, this is a foxhole. I um, hope you can see it. Right here, this is a foxhole. And look what I just found right next to it. Looks like nothing to you probably right now, but this is a US World War II cover protective individual. It's a gas cape. They use these to uh, outline the foxholes. It's a big plastic cape. Uh, you can pull it over your hat. They also use it for bad weather. On top is a part where you can see through. This is uh, from the package. The, the cover itself is in there. So they would rip this open and use it right in this foxhole. And I found them before in this area. You can still see some writing right there. I'm not gonna do too much right now because I don't wanna damage it. But uh, this is amazing. Right next to this foxhole, you just know that this was used by the person, by the soldier in this foxhole. Searching for some more plain parts as well. Just found some small pieces of aluminum. And uh, right here, I actually just found a buckle. Uh, this is definitely older than the Second World War. It's broken, maybe 1700s. Right, so that's where the Lancaster crashed. And I uh, just found some more pieces of aluminum. This is gonna be the next find. Yeah, this has to be also from the plane. Another very interesting find. Right over there are the World War I trenches. And I just had a signal right here. Found a Mauser shell casing. It's actually a life round, the bullet fell off. But I cleaned the hat stamp and take a look at the date right there. Right there on top, it says 18, which means 1918. So this German life round was lost here more than 100 years ago. Right over there is the crater where the plane crashed and just had a big signal and look what I just found. These are the first two that I found. Two 303 live rounds from the Lancaster, still with the belt links on it. And look at that right there. They just came down here when the plane crashed over there and they're still here. So now it's time to take them out. Of course, it's gonna fall apart probably. The belt links, most likely. Yeah, wow, look at this. Oh man, that's so, wow. This is insane, guys, wow. You see that? Well, these are pretty rusty, but some of them, wow, look at this one. You can still see the color right there. There are more of them underneath it. Let me grab my knife real quick and try to take these out. Wow, wow. Amazing, look at all the primers. Three more. And yep, I see another one right there. Maybe a couple. Yep, oh, wow. Look at this. Maybe that's it, I'm not sure. Let me do a check with my pinpointer. Nope, there's more right there on the left side. There we go. Wow. Let's take them out. Oh yeah, four more life rounds. Might be empty now. Nope. All right there underneath this small tree. And I don't want to damage this small tree because it's doing its best to grow. Ah, two more. More right there. I feel it right there. There we go. That's the last one. No, it's not. Another one, and that one is broken. Oh, that one is actually exploded. See, because of the crash, the heat of the fire. Found a lot of exploded rounds here, this area before. That's another one. Oh no, not one. Not one, guys. Oh, I cannot believe this. Look at this. It's empty now. Yep, that's it. <laughs> oh my God. 
Look at this, so many live rounds. All 303 still on the belt link. Right next to these two big old trees. Another signal and another life round from the plane. Oh, had a big signal right here next to an old tree. And of course this huge root was in the way and here's another one and here's another one. Um, turned out to be this. Oh, looks like the Russians been here as well. Right next to the crater right now and um, just found another one of these from the incendiary bombs. The plane was of course carrying a lot of these. Just found some small pieces in this area because the crater is of course right there. And I just found another part right here. This one had an interesting shape and I decided to clean the back. And look at this. That is very interesting. Um, it says magnetic right there and right there it says volt 55 C or I'm not sure type 6 I think this is a very interesting part hopefully I can clean it up some more without breaking it this is also a very interesting piece there's actually nothing left almost well there is no shape at all anymore but this is completely melted aluminum can you see it that's unbelievable right next to it another interesting piece can't see any numbers at the moment but maybe after some cleaning Another interesting part of the plane, uh, but we really have to stop right now because it's getting dark and uh, we still have to walk to the car. Oh man, I really don't want to leave. Look what I just discovered on the way back. Oh, more very interesting parts. Still green paint right there. Oh man, it's completely melted. Another part right here, it's all in this area. Black paint. More parts, uh, melted aluminum again. Another big piece of aluminum, completely melted. Oh, this is so cool to find. Yep, too bad, not enough time. We really had to go. Here are some of the finds after cleaning. These are of course not all the finds, but only the most interesting ones. And yes, normally I film this with a blue background, but I used uh, linseed oil to preserve it and um, I don't want that on the blue background, so I just used a towel. Let's start with the pre-war stuff. Here we have the inside of a pocket watch and an old coin, hammered coin, very bad condition. Um, some musket balls. I really love this one, look how small that is. But it's still deadly. Then we have this, some kind of jewelry thingy. I'm not sure what it is, probably some kind of pendant. This, maybe it'll buckle or something. And here we actually have a buckle, well a broken buckle and this pendant. I cleaned it a little and that's silver right there. We turn around we can see another figure right there. I'm not gonna clean it anymore because I really don't want it to fall apart but uh, wow that's a very old pendant that's for sure. And of course this bell which still works. These are amazing look how big that is. There's a small crack right there and uh, I also found some post-war coins but they're not really interesting to show you, except this one. This is a Polish post-war coin. I thought it was an interesting one. It's from 1949. Just funny, because you don't really find these too often. Now let's get to the World War II stuff. Of course, some bullets. These are in very bad condition. The Dutch shell casings. These are in great condition. Just look at that hat stamp right there, 1925. And this one is very nice as well. 1896. And this pocket knife, here you can see where the shield was. And I also noticed that right there is actually part of the blade. So that means that the blade was actually open when it was lost. Um, but yeah, it's completely rotted right away because it's iron. But um, still a great find. And this grommet, V1 rocket parts, these are from the engine. Very interesting and extremely rare. These two push buttons, not in the best condition, but still very nice. And these buttons. This one is also very bad condition and clean this one with oxalic acid and it looks amazing right now. It's very shiny, so that's definitely the best one. Uh, this hook, I still don't know what kind of hook it is. Maybe from the aircraft crew or maybe the plane itself, I don't know. There are no markings in it, so if you recognize it, please let me know. And then we got all these plane parts. I really love this big piece right here. There's still a lot of original paint left. And as you can see, it's very shiny because I'm protecting the paint with linseed oil. Also on the back, it has black paint right there. So uh, yeah, this is an amazing piece. Just look at this. That's the original Lancaster paint. So very nice. 
Also this of course from the plane, uh, melted aluminum, still some burned stuff on there, and more melted aluminum, isn't that interesting to see. More plane parts, this one is also interesting, uh, too bad there were no markings in it, but also a nice piece. Uh, this, not sure what this is, and also here we can see some black paint left on it, right there, and also on the back. Another part right here, didn't find any markings in this. Some small pieces and these parts are actually marked. First, let's take a look at this one. I have no idea what this is. Uh, it's some kind of switch. Uh, so if you know what it is, please leave a comment. But it has some markings in it right there and also right there. Looks like it has a two right there and also right there it has a marking. So yeah, once again, I have no clue what it was, but uh, it's definitely from the Lancaster. And this part, very nicely marked with a number there as well and also there is a small stamp then we have this part which is very interesting also i don't know what this is but it's marked right there it says test it so whatever it is or whatever it was it's tested and on the other side we have some more numbers right there so yeah again if you recognize any of these parts please leave a comment um we got this part which is also amazing some screws on this side and right here it's marked. There it has a number. And also on the other side it has a number. And even here. And under the number is another marking. Still some paint left as well. And this one of course. Still don't know what it is. Uh, I was thinking about maybe headphones or something. I have no clue. But I'm pretty sure it had an Air Ministry stamp right there on top. I found parts before with that, with the crown and AM. It was right there, but I just don't know what it is. And this one is very cool, it's in great condition. Big screw right there, and it's marked right here. CY843242A. And right on top, it's marked as well, right there. Very interesting piece. I think it might be from the engine. It's heavy. And of course, these, these are called tile breakers. This one is in great condition. You can still see some markings on it. Completely melted right there because of the heat. These ones are not really cleaned yet. Also, I can still clean these more, but I really wanted to upload this video today. This one is also very nice. Nicely marked and very heavy. And this one is interesting because you can see that the ground is just melted to it. So I'm definitely gonna keep that on. Then we have this cover protective individual. Um, I was really surprised by the condition because I was cleaning it and look at all the text still on it. It clearly says cover protective individual. Stock number 12C, thousand, contract something 3602. And on the other side, there's also text right there. I believe these are instructions how to use it, protect it. So that's very nice, great find. And then of course we have all these rations. I really like this small one because first of all, it's complete and it still had the top in there and look at this you can see the way it's been opened definitely done with a p38 can opener so interesting to see that was done in 1944 here we got more remains of ration cans tops and bottoms um, this one even still has the key isn't that amazing i left a couple behind because they were just falling apart but um i tried to save most of them this one is still a little bit shiny and i really like this one still see some text right there also right there Packing, CO, some more text on it right there, but I'm not going to clean it any further because I don't want to damage it. So I'm just going to keep it like this. Um, this one is also very nice, still in great condition. Then we have this one. We found this one in the foxhole. This is dubbing. It still has a lot of text right there. Roughly apply, avoid drying leather. And right now I'm going to show you what it's supposed to look like. So yeah, that's what it is, dubbing. Still a little bit left in there, it smells pretty weird. And uh, this one is dubbing as well. You can still see the G from dubbing and a lot of text. Still that typical US green color. Also, I'm gonna show you a picture of what it's supposed to look like right now. Really happy I was able to save these. This one is also pretty cool. Um, this one was yellow, not sure what it was, but I really love to find those rations. Well guys, that's it for this metal detecting video. I really hope you enjoyed. More videos on the way, so stay tuned for that. And I just can't wait to go out there again to search for more awesome relics.
Thanks for watching everybody, I hope you liked the video. If you did like the video, please leave a like and a comment. If you have any questions, feel free to ask and subscribe if you want to see more Metal Detective videos. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.